Good evening, everyone. I'm Robin Friedman, one of the co-founders of Tribe Talk. And on behalf of myself and my fellow co-founders, Jude Sidney, Michelle Black, as well as the Jewish Federation and Endowment Fund of the Bay Area and the Jewish Teen Initiative of Combined Jewish Philanthropies, I want to welcome you here tonight for this important conversation with Eliza Kanner, CJP's Campus Engagement Manager, and Matt Gann, Business and Operations Analyst for URJ's um, Camping and Youth Division, as well as Vice Chair of the Hillel Foundation of Orange County. For many of you here with this tonight, going to college is gonna be the first time that you're gonna have total control over your free time. There's nobody telling you what to do. And there are an unbelievable number of organizations that you can get involved with on campus. So tonight we're going to talk about the organizations that are Jewish in nature and find out a little bit about them. Tonight's moderator is Brett Lubarski. He is director of the Jewish Teen Initiative at Combined Jewish Philanthropies, and he, it, which is a national model for Jewish teen engagement, helping to connect, empower, and inspire teens and professionals throughout the greater Boston Jewish community. Prior to joining CJP, Brett was associate director of the Jewish Teen Initiative of Greater Boston, where he directed the Peer Leadership Fellows Program, a relationship-driven peer engagement model that has been adapted around the country. He has been creating moments, spaces, and systems of meaning and connection for youth, emerging adults, and professionals for more than 18 years, working with congregations, summer camps, and organizations throughout the country. He is a graduate of the M Squared Senior Educators Cohort, the Institute for Experiential Jewish, Jewish Education, um, as well as um, being, as I said, the director of Combined Jewish Philanthropies. He is also um, a graduate of a program with the Jim Joseph Foundation, and he's a Birthright Israel Fellow. Um, before I turn this over to Brett, just a few minor housekeeping items please turn your cameras on, we would like to see you. Please watch in speaker mode. We want this to be a discussion, so feel free to ask questions. Some have already been sent in, but feel free to put questions in the chat, put your name in the chat to be called on, raise your virtual hand and we'll unmute you, or just raise your hand in front of the camera and we'll see it. In order to facilitate the Q&A, it's important to have your name reflected in your Zoom box. If you need to add your name and you don't know how, just take your cursor and hover over your box. You're gonna see three little dots. And from that menu, you choose your name and you can rename yourself there. Um, and with that, Brett, take it away. Thanks, Robin. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Brett Lubarski. Uh, and uh, we're gonna dive right in tonight. Um, as Robin said, many teens uh, prepare to head off to campus and aren't quite sure about what the connections uh, and opportunities that are available to them are gonna look like. And so together with Tribe Talk, uh, this webinar series was created to help address that. Uh, so together, um, please feel free throughout the conversation. If you have questions, if you have comments, uh, please use the chat box. And we're actually gonna uh, start by using that. If everybody can just say hello um, and say where you're from. Um, so if you could put your name and where you're from in the chat box, um, that would be great. And we can uh, just take a minute to do that. Uh, this is very exciting. We have uh, we have people here from from all over the country. Um, so while people are saying hello, uh, we are going to be able to say hello to two uh, very special guests this evening. Uh, who bring an immense amount of experience uh, to our Zoom room. Uh, Eliza Kanner uh, serves as the Campus Engagement Manager at Combined Jewish Philanthropies. I have the pleasure of getting to work with her. And in her role, she works uh, with students and campus professionals across Greater Boston to help cultivate Jewish life on campus. She has worked extensively on countering anti-Semitic and anti-Israel rhetoric on campus as a professional and as a student herself, and has met with international leaders at the United Nations to speak to the dangers of the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. Uh, Eliza is thrilled to help students who are, are embarking on their college career uh, to find their Jewish community on campus. So welcome, Eliza. 
Um, and Matthew Gahn is originally from San Jose, California, and graduated from Chapman University in 2016 with a degree in communication studies. While in undergrad, Matthew studied abroad in Israel and was involved in Hillel, serving as the president of Chapman Hillel and on Hillel International Student Cabinet. Uh, and since Matt graduated, he has been in a variety of leadership roles with teen organizations, including URJ Camp Newman and NIFTY, the Reform Jewish Youth Movement. Currently, Matt serves as the executive vice chair of the board of directors of the Hillel Foundation of Orange County and works for the Union for Reform Judaism Camping and Youth Division as the business and operations analyst. Welcome, Matt. Um, so let's let's get uh, right to the conversation so we can know before we go. Um, so for, first question up uh, to kick us off tonight, uh, we wanna up our Jewish geography game and meet other Jews on campus. Eliza, would you mind kicking us off and sharing a little bit, like, like where do we start with that? Of course, thanks so much, Brett. And thank you to Tribe Talk for having me. I'm excited to be joining in this very important conversation with our teens. Um, and I'll kick, kick it off by actually sharing a bit of my Jewish and Israel on campus story and share that I took advantage of that very first Friday night and attended Shabbat at my campus. I went to the University of Connecticut and I took that brave step of attending my first Shabbat dinner. And that night I met other students that connected me to Jewish students that were in my major and that were in organizations that I was interested in being a part of that introduced me to people that were in Greek organizations um, to really start to build that community for myself. And as you said, you know, do that Jewish geography um, and realize that we actually knew a lot of the same people. And so a lot of campus organizations, the Campus Hillel's actually offer Fresh Fest, and that is an opportunity for first year students to move to campus. Generally, it's about a week before all the rest of the first year students move to campus and they get to bond with other students. Um, they, you know, learn a bit more about the opportunities that they have to get involved with Jewish life on campus. So if you are looking for that opportunity to start that Jewish life um, as soon as you get to campus and even before, check with your local Hillel to see if they offer that fresh fest. But if not, take that leap of faith, go to that first um, Shabbat dinner, and you'll see that those connections and those opportunities are where you're going to start to find those, the right place for you to connect with other Jewish students. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Matt, do you, do you have anything you want to add? Sure. I, one of the pieces I think that's really interesting about campus is the many places and spaces that you may find Jewish students involved in, right? And so even if you, you know, go to that first Shabbat experience that first Friday night, which I also did at Chapman University on my first Friday night, um, you may also find Jewish students involved in different clubs connected to the organizations um, across campus, which we're going to talk a little, little bit about tonight. But there's also this ability to celebrate Jewish holidays and do and be part of ritual moments, but also to be engaged and find other Jewish students in the other um, kind of academic and extracurricular pieces that are involved in a variety of campuses. Awesome. Great. And we'll be able to dive in uh, to a little bit more uh, of that in a little bit. Um, so speaking of, of the different organizations and opportunities on campus, um, I've heard of organizations like Hillel and Chabad, but, uh, but I'm not really sure like what they are. And I'm wondering uh, if you might be able to talk to some of the similarities and differences uh, between the different Jewish organizations on campus, Matt. Yes, absolutely. So when it comes to campus, kind of the two main um, organizations that offer really the wide range of Jewish Jewish pieces that both include kind of engagement and community building, but also a lot of the ritual moments, those Shabbats, those Passovers, those, those high holy days, um, often fall in the Chabad and the Hillel, Hillel realm. And I will say a variety of, a variety of campuses and their variety of campuses have different models across about how they choose to go about this. Typically, the Chabad model is a um, Jewish couple that lives in a home together. And then Hillel's can be a bunch of different things. They have some on campuses, they don't actually have buildings and they're more kind of based in student clubs and within the university. They have some that have big, large buildings that have dining halls within it serving kosher food. There's some that have um, more home style 
more homes as they're building. So there's a wide range of opportunities. And I would say one of the big pieces that we look when we look at the Hillel model is drive them across the country. They have a very large programmatic base, right? So in addition to those Shabbats and those high holy days and those Passovers that we know students want to be able to celebrate, especially if they're far away from where they far away from home, they also have a variety of clubs that relate to Israel, and they may have clubs that relate to more just social kind of gatherings um, for students. They may have clubs that are connected to the university, um, which we're going to touch on what that actually, so some of those clubs might be throughout the evening, but there's a lot under this kind of brand and this branch of what it looks like. Um, many also, that's kind of for most camps is where birthright connected together in terms of their multi-campus, right? So some may have a different, some may have multiple buildings on campuses, but some actually might share a building if they're in between a few universities. Um, so some are individual, some are kind of sharing buildings and sharing spaces, depending on the size of those universities. A little bit different as well. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Eliza, you want to jump in? Yeah, I'll also add on that, you know, a lot of times we hear Halil and Chabad are the two major, major players when it comes to Jewish life on campus, but it doesn't mean that you can't be involved with both. I know many students are involved with Halil for different opportunities and initiatives and programs, and they also attend Chabad for Shabbat dinners or um, the different holidays. So there's definitely opportunities to be involved with both and many, op many opportunities to also hold student leadership positions in both Halil and Chabad. Awesome. And, and I, I think one of the things that I'd probably add um, to, to the really, uh, the, to the great points that both of you made is that, you know, there isn't one path. Um, and, you know, as, as teens are, are looking at, um, you know, deciding which school they're going to end up at and, and also what their journey is going to be like once they're on campus um, to be able to, to recognize that there, there are multiple entry points um, and, and opportunities out there. Um, so don't be afraid to ask questions and, and to kind of find, find where those paths uh, will lead. Um, so speaking of, of other clubs and organizations on campus, like what are some of the other ways other than, you know, we just spoke a little bit about Hillel and Chabad. Um, I, I, what, are, what are some of the other ways that, uh, that people might be able to get involved Jewishly on campus? I'll start with this one. Um, so as Matt already said, there's not just the Jewish organizations that you need to be a part of in order to find that Jewish home away from home or your Jewish peers. There's a lot of organizations such as Greek life organizations. There are historically um, Jewish fraternities and historically Jewish sororities that aren't just exclusive to Jewish students. I think that's important to note for all of the organizations that we're mentioning. Um, although there are a place for Jewish students, it doesn't mean that if, uh, if you're not Jewish, you can't find find a place in these organizations as well. So historically Jewish fraternities, sororities, um, there are Jewish acapella groups on many organizations. Um, and then there are a lot of social organizations such as Hala for Hunger, which um, provides students a space for them to get involved with different community service projects. So, um, you know, in addition to, to being able to find a place to observe holidays, um, there's also many opportunities to fill that social, um, social cup as well in, in your college experience. Nice. Um, and and I, I will say that I, I'll recognize that we've we've mentioned uh, a number of organizations, wonderful organizations so far. Um, and, you know, the, the, the title of the uh, of this conversation was the ABCs of of, of life on campus. And I, uh, it does become quite a bit of alphabet soup. Um, so uh, for for those watching, um, just a, a friendly reminder to head on over to tribetalk.org. Uh, to check out some incredible resources um, and links to many of these organizations, um, as, as well as um, with our uh, with our partners here this evening uh, from from the Bay Area, they have JBridge, uh, and in Boston we have we have JewishBostonTeens.com, and so there there are a number of ways to to find out kind of how to how to click in uh, to many of these organizations, um, and you can find that. That website in the chat. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to to drop them in. Um, and uh, we're going to continue on to our next question. Um, so 
I, I keep kosher, and I'm wondering what dining options might be available on campus. Matt, can you give us kind of a lay of the land on, on where to start thinking about that? Sure, absolutely. So this is also one where you'll find that it's really campus dependent. Um, I will say a lot of our larger, you know, a lot of the larger universities that also have very large percent of Jewish students, um, some of those universities, they have kosher dining within the actual university system. Um, they may be in specific dining halls. It may not be every location on campus. Um, they may have that. And then a lot of those universities also have either have a Hillel building that has kosher dining um, within that Hillel building as well. So depending on where that looks, right? So UCLA, for example, they have a completely kind of in-service dining option within their Hillel building that's constantly serving meals for students on campus. Some campuses, many on their size and Jewish population, they are going to have it for certain meals or things like that. A bot is typically an option as well for students that they can go for kosher meals. Um, so I think that's, you know, that's a great area where I always encourage to ask the question of where can I find those kosher meals is kind of one of your, if that's important, really uh, important piece to you. One of those for sure top five questions to be asking on the campus around is it with housed within one of the these Jewish organizations, or is the university providing it with internally in themselves? And what are the ability to get that kosher food? Um, because the reality is, in some places they may have it, but what is actually is it for every meal? Is it just for dinners? Um, and if not, can you cook in wherever you're choosing to live to work with that as well? Great, thanks, Matt. Um, we we have some awesome questions coming in uh, on the chat. Um, so uh, we, we have we have a question. Is there a benefit of being in a predominantly Jewish sorority versus being in a sorority that is not known to be historically Jewish? Um, do either one of you want to take that? Yeah, I'll actually take that. Um, so there it's really it's interesting on every single campus, although these historically Jewish fraternities and sororities, um, they do have a high percentage of Jewish individuals. It also is going to include individuals that aren't Jewish. So while you'll have the friends that that go to Hillel with you, that go to Chabad, that are a part of um, birth rate trips with you, um, that doesn't mean that if you join a sorority that isn't historically Jewish, that you will also find individuals that are Jewish and are interested in going to Hillel and interested in attending birthright and whatnot. Um, I actually was in a sorority that is not historically Jewish. However, a large percentage, I believe it was 65% of our chapter was Jewish. So um, you find your tribe, as, as you like to say. However, being in a new city, I do know friends that are part or, you know, were a part of historically Jewish fraternities and sororities, and they find alumni chapters in the cities um, that they're in, um, which helps them to connect with Jewish life um, upon, you know, entering their young adult life. So that is something to, to consider if you're planning on moving to a different city upon graduation, um, if you want to stay connected to a Jewish sorority um, to help you get connected to Jewish life, that is a pro of being in a historically Jewish sorority or fraternity. Awesome. Uh, th thank you so much, Eliza. Um, we have a, we have another question coming in, um, wondering, uh, in terms of like kind of getting the lay of the land, uh, and evaluating Jewish groups on campus, um, how, how does Hillel or Chabad differ, uh, from, from what we might expect from, from other Jewish groups that are unique to one campus. So, you know, the, each campus is different as we know. And so to, some have specific uh, unique clubs, you know, for that campus um, wh where others are much more broadly known. Um, is, is there kind of a, a good way to, to approach that? Sure. So some campuses are very have a variety of different outcomes for student engagement that I have internally within the campus itself. And what sometimes we see happen actually is Hillel is not necessarily a club on that campus. So the students build a Jewish student union or a their mascot, you might hear like Matt, whatever their mascot is for Israel, or you might hear um, Jewish student association. You might hear some of that language and a variety of those campuses, they are working with their Hillel, Hillel kind of part, Hillel counterpart in that way. Um, so that's one of the things that kind of Hillel really works with is the ecosystem is these other pieces. So actually working together on that student engagement element, right? So there's 
And there is a reality that we often find students who are involved in Israel may go to a conference, right? Some Israel conference, that's APAC or J Street or whatever the Israel conference is of the time. They may go to that conference and they usually do it and get support either from the organization directly or Hillel is usually helping to support that and also support the larger club. So some of this comes down to what are the campus rules and how does that interact with the ecosystem of the Jewish organizations? And, and many campuses, we've seen this shift a lot, at least in the Hello world, we've seen many campuses shift from being ready to work with hundreds of partners for their students, um, because reality is not only is there Hillel's, there are, there's the Christian student organization, there's a lot of larger national organizations that are involved on the campus level. We've actually seen a lot of campuses shift away from that saying, I want students to be the ownership of the club in its entirety and build out a Jewish student union that then works with an external club within the university that may just have a building outside of the um, outside of the university itself. And a lot of other interfaith groups actually are starting to see this trend of the country as schools are pushing to ensure that these are things that students want and they do. It just means that they're building from these unions that connect with the larger organization. Great. Thank you. Um, we have we have we have lots of questions flowing in. These are these are wonderful questions, everyone. Keep them coming. Uh, a, a good question that just came in is, do any of the Jewish organizations on campus have any sort of kind of step up opportunities? So somebody's interested in XYZ University, um, can can they just call the Hillel or Chabad and, and get matched up with somebody who might be able to show them what the inside scoop looks like and maybe spend a, a day and, and potentially a night with them, you know, as, as kind of a guide. Um, and I'll, before I turn it over, I do want to say that many of the teen initiatives around the country uh, in, in partnership with uh, the Jewish Education and Engagement Teen Funder Collaborative uh, at Jewish Federations of North America created a virtual uh, campus road trip uh, a few years ago uh, during COVID, and uh, it has continued in different cities. So there are wonderful resources online to kind of give you a day in the life. Um, and also, um, I, I know I can speak for Boston, uh, you know, our, our partners are, are excited and ready to hear from everybody um, or anyone. So, um, you know, please, um, you know, when we talk in terms of, of resources, uh, you know, your it, depending on how you're affiliated or connected in your community, whether it's a synagogue or a JCC or a community or your federation, um, you know, we're, we're, there are many Jewish professionals who are, are really excited to act as connectors to help you, uh, you know, enter that next chapter uh, of your journey. Um, so, so please feel free, uh, you know, and don't hesitate to, to, to use those connections. Um, and we'll make sure that uh, in an email that, that goes out as a follow-up and also available on tribetalk.org, um, many, many of those connections and resources are available. Um, I've been babbling enough. I'll turn it over to, to both Eliza and Matt. Um, do you have anything you want to add as far as kind of getting connected with different people on campus to, to be able to figure out what's really going on there? Yes, absolutely. So every hill in the country, it is the our favorite time of the year. It is time May 1st is, as you know, the National Decision Day for universities and a variety of actually gap year programs and external programs outside universities coming up. So it is that time when we see many parents, we see many students reaching out to Wells across the country to to see what campus is like. And so my biggest encouragement is go to go directly to their website and just email someone on their staff and they are waiting to be reached out to. That is what they do. And we know that spring is a time when this all happens. I always encourage if students are visiting campuses to reach out to the organization there. Um, and get in touch with a student. They also will connect you with students. And if folks want to hear from the professional staff, they also do that. There's a kind of window of uh, there's always this window into the campus that you can get access to at any time of the year. And we know that spring is a very busy time as decisions get made. So we are, they are all ready and waiting to uh, to share the campus and share what life really looks like in terms of the Jewish culture. And the other piece I would say that that I always like to remind folks is, especially if you have parents who went to your alma, parents and your child to the alma mater, we see a very different generational element of what engagement looked like now than what it did before. So the priorities of student outcomes are already for students just changes. And the pandemic of course has changed that even more. And so even if 
you had a parent that went to one university and you may be going there, I would highly still encourage them to reach out to see what the Jewish life looks like now and where is it going as the needs of our current generation changes. Um, I'll uh, add on that that's especially important to reach out to the Hillels and ask to, you know, talk to students that are involved on that campus, especially if you're hearing about this campus in the news when it comes to anti-Israel and anti-Semitic rhetoric. Um, a lot of times you hear about the horrors and the bad news, but there's so much um, great stuff happening on college campuses. So if you do have concerns, if there are worries about what's going on on a particular campus that you have an interest in, reach out, talk to the students because their experience may be very different than what you're hearing on the news or in the media. Um, and many, many, of the, um, many of the staff people on campuses uh, across the country are, are really excited to help um, connect to other areas of the university as well. It's not just, you know, you're not just calling up a Hillel professional uh, and, and they're just going to talk to you about Hillel. Um, so I, I'd say, you know, a, a question just came in, like, is there a way to, to try to pair, um, you know, different Jewish faculty advisors or, or uh, professors, you know, with, with Jewish, Jewish students versus it just being, you know, a random assignment? I, I think that's, a, it's an excellent question. And I, I think, um, you know, the Hillel professionals that, that I've spoken to, um, as, as well as, you know, our our partners at federations and 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 synagogues, you know, across the country. Um, I, you know, I I think there's a vast network, uh, really waiting to to give everybody a hug, you know, and 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 to to think about how how we can uh, do do a better job of connecting people in the ways uh, to which they're they're looking to be connected. It's not it's not one size fits all. Um, and and I think I think that that's really important uh, to to think about. Um, so, all right, we, we've talked a lot about different organizations and, and different ways to connect. Here, here's the question. There's kind of a, a buzz going on, you know, in, in some of the headlines around the country on, you know, like, how do we know what the, what the Jewish vibes are on campus? Like, there, there might be some campuses that, that might have gotten, you know, a little bit of, uh, I, I don't want to say a bad rap. But, you know, like, like there's stuff in the news that there's a lot going on in the world around us. And I know next time uh, uh, the, the next webinar is really going to focus on anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism on campus. So we, we can kind of uh, push the pause button for that for 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 round two. Uh, but but if, if both of you would just kind of give a, a quick little overview of you know, like how do how do we really know what's going on on campus and 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 how to how to get kind of a vibe check? I think Tripoc has an excellent resource on their website, which has a college comparison. So you're able to see how large of a Jewish community a campus has, and that's a really good way to gauge, you know the vibrancy of Jewish life on campus. I would actually suggest going through, you know, a, a university's Hillel's social media, seeing what events they're doing, see how active the Jewish community is. And in terms of the second part of, of campuses that aren't so tolerant of Jews, I don't think there's any, any campus that isn't tolerant of Jews. Every campus and every community is going to be tolerant. However, it's a matter of how reactive and proactive administration is being when incidents happen. So I think that's really the question that we need to ask is how is the administration really supporting the Jewish students on campus? And if there is a concern, if something does happen and a Jewish student um, goes to administration with this concern, how how are they addressing this problem? Um, to, that's a better way to, to gauge how tolerant of a, a campus um, a campus is to Jewish, Jewish life and Jewish students. Thank you, Eliza. That that's, that's really helpful. Um, let, let me kind of give you a follow-up with that. If, um, if a college doesn't have a Hillel, um, who, who might someone be able to reach out to if they're interested in, in getting involved in Jewish life on campus? Yeah, most campuses do have an office of spiritual life. Um, and so that, that would really be the best contact if there's not a, 
a direct hello contact go to to see who who would be the best um, person. Every college, every campus is different, but usually there is some sort of office of spiritual life um, that you'll be able to find on a website. But then also, you know, as as we are saying, we are resources for you. So if there is a campus in your area um, and you're you're hoping to get more in on touch and contact with Jewish life on that particular campus, the Federation in that area is generally connected to those campuses. So please feel free to reach out to a Federation professional and we'll help to get you connected. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Matt, before, before I head on uh, to, to another question, did you want to add anything to that? I think that really hit it on the nose. The only piece I would say is that the campuses that you you know, may be interested in are always, there's always a way to see, I would say there's a, what you see on the external, what you see in the internal. And uh, it is very easy to get caught up when we see in the headlines versus what's actually happening on the ground. And the priorities that are being put in meeting, the priorities of the administration don't sometimes meet what's happening in the ground. And so trying to both see that and check in with students or the campus itself is always kind of the best way to figure out what your perspective on that university would be and having kind of both all of that going on. I would say Great. Really Thank you both so much. Um, we're going to uh, we're going to switch topics right now um, and we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about Israel. Um, so Eliza, I was hoping that you might be able to kick us off and um, let's talk about Israel on campus like like you know we'll, we'll, we'll do another vibe check on that and kind of like what's the deal? what, what should I know um, and, and and how do we, how do we help people kind of navigate uh, you know that that whole climate? Of course, yeah. The, the, even just the phrase, let's talk Israel on campus, that seems to be the line everyone's asking, whether you're a student and you're about to embark on your college career or you're a parent and you're seeing the headlines about anti-Israel campaigns that are going on on college campuses across the country. You know, what's going on? Um, you know, college is an excellent time for students to be able to explore academics, social causes. Um, and, and with that said, sometimes Israel gets in the mix and it gets really messy. Um, but it's an also it's also an amazing time for Jewish and non-Jewish students to explore um, different parts of the world that they haven't been exposed to. So there are so many opportunities um, to get involved with Israel education, Israel trips, which we'll be talking about a little bit later in the webinar. Um, so. While yes, Israel is an area in which a lot of Jewish students do find concern. They they get nervous about how how do I engage with Israel um, without making myself um, a target, so to speak. Um, there are also many ways to get involved and support Israel and speak up for Israel. Um, so, you know, we, we've seen since anti-Israel campaigns have started in the early 2000s, um, we've seen a rise of anti-Israel and anti-Zionist um, rhetoric happening on college campuses. But we've also seen so much growth when it comes to Israel education and Israel advocacy. Um, so as much as we're hearing about the negative stuff on the news, there's also so many opportunities that students have to engage with Israel in a positive way. Very cool. Um not to put you on the spot, but I'm going to. Um, what's uh, what's like one of your favorite um, activities or programs that that you saw uh, or or that you've heard about from from some of our partners on campus in in different ways that people are are able to connect with Israel. So I think there's a lot of opportunities for Jewish and non-Jewish students to learn about Israel together. Um, I think that. Before there was this emphasis on teaching just the Jewish community about Israel and just getting the Jewish community to Israel. However, we're already we're, we're we're excited about Israel. We're already we're there. We're in the same mindset. And now there's a big shift of connecting Jewish students with other student organizations on campus that have shared values with Israel and bringing them into the conversation, bringing them into the discussion, and in some cases bringing them with us to Israel. And I think that that's a really important way that we're engaging with Israel. So it's not just a focus on the Jewish community and making sure that we are able to talk about Israel, but we're really bringing people into the fold and teaching students about Israel, but also teaching them how to teach others about Israel as well. Awesome. That, that's so important. Um, Matt, it, can, can we have you weigh in from, uh, for, from the West Coast? Uh, what, what, are, what are some examples that, that you've seen or heard of? Sure. I, 
I think the Israel program is, is, has become more dynamic in the past five to ten years. We are seeing, as many people know about birthright, but there are trips um, with other organizations where we see students actually go to Israel for a week um, through the Shalom Hartman Institute, and they're learning, and they're engaging in text, and they're taking the text, and they're bringing traditional places, and they're engaging, and, and not only talking about the conflict that I think everyone um, has heard all about the conflict. They're also talking about like what are the values and pieces that from Israel that can be applied to other parts of the world. And more important that we can apply as Jewish people as we think about the rest of the world. As we know that we don't exist as the Jews, but we are a much more complex people. And so we we seeing such more by more dynamic programming in addition to what that looks like both on campus and off campus. The other big piece that I would say I think is probably one of the most um impactful programs is the campuses that have Israel fellows. Um, and if you don't know what that is, that is a the Jewish Agency for Israel. There's, they send fellows to different campuses all across the United States. Um, they're here for about two years on average, and they are here to learn and educate and engage with both the Israeli American community in the, on camp, those campuses, but more importantly, to engage with students and to bring them into the conversation and to say, you're talking to someone who's directly living in Israel, who understands um, what it means to be, but also understands some of the challenges that people have with sort of outside the country. Um, and there's a little more of a relationship there that I don't think very many people get access to, to actually talk to someone who grew up there and hear from their perspective what it means and what it, what it looks like. And so um, that is the other, I would say, totally powerful. And I think the dynamic shift that we've seen in the Israel programming in the past um, few years is is awesome. And where we think need to be heading and what's what students are wanting. So that's a great thing that we're seeing. Thank you, Matt. Really appreciate it. Um, we, have, we have lots of great questions coming in on this. Um, Eliza, I was hoping that you might be able to speak to um, uh, there's a lot of different clubs and groups and um, and movements uh, that are that are present on different campuses. Um, one of the questions that just came in is, uh, can you speak to Jewish Voice for Peace um, and other Jewish anti-Israel or pro-Palestinian student groups? Um, can, can you kind of give us a, a snapshot on um, you know some of those groups and and how how people uh, might be able to know before they go? Yeah, of course. So this is an area in which as a professional, I'm even still learning about all the different organizations and their mission and their activities, both in a community, but also on campus. And we've seen a lot of um, organizations that, you know, are national or international starting to really focus in on campus and starting to create a presence on campus. Um, so I'm going to go right back to Tribe Talk has another page on their website that lists many of the organizations and there's still so many. Um, but what's important when you're starting to look at organizations is go beyond just the mission line. Um, you know, so many of the organizations, um, you know, say that they believe in human rights and respect and um, you have to dig a little bit deeper to make sure that they fit and they are in line with your goals and your objectives, especially when it comes to Israel. Um, Jewish Voices for Peace is an organization um, that, you know, brings together Jewish people that want to want to talk about Israel um, in a negative light. So it's important that you're really doing your research and you're reading beyond um, the mission statement. Um, uh, different pro-Palestinian organizations um, that have more of an anti-Israel um, sentiment would be uh, Students for Justice in Palestine. Um, that is an international organization that created a Jewish uh, I'm sorry, a presence on campus um, in 2005. And they are really the organization that spearheads the BDS campaigns that you hear about on campus. BDS stands for Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions. And Students for Justice in Palestine are variations of anti-Israel groups that are forming on college campuses are the, are the students that are behind these BDS movements on campus. So um, you'll, you'll, you'll see SJP, Students for Justice in Palestine, is the, the student group that is most prevalent on most college campuses, but there are different variations of pro-Palestinian groups on college campuses as well. Uh, that, thank you. I, I know this is something that we talk a lot about um, at, at Jewish Teen Initiative programming, um, you know, and, and with partners throughout the community is, uh, you know, to, to really be able 
uh, to be part of the conversation and and to 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 do your homework a little bit. Um, so as as you said, I, I I think you said that beautifully. Is you know really really look be beyond the name and the mission statement, um, and and really uh, see you know what what are the conversations that are going on, um, and like how how do we, how do we have conversations with people um, where we can represent our values and and who we are and 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 who we want to be um, and and how we. Can can create the community that we want to create together, um, and and I think each campus does that in in in, in many different ways. And, and depending on which campus you're looking at, you know there there are different professionals uh, who serve as resources and also uh, train student leaders, um, you know who are involved in in, in different areas um, and fellowships. So it's it's important to to for people to do, do their homework and to to be able to um, you know. Uh, approach it with with an open mind i i i'd say and and also you know uh like no before you go right uh so let let's talk about like getting to israel so there are so many um you know different wonderful opportunities and programs um and i i'm wondering uh if if we can start uh with with eliza and and then we can we can shift over to matt um you know can can you tell us kind of like What's the skinny on birthright versus onward? Like, again, we're, we're kind of entering that alphabet soup. So uh, drop some knowledge on us, if you will. Yeah. So I'll start off by saying I highly, highly suggest that you look into birthright first. Birthright is a 10-day immersive trip um, to Israel, and you really get to see the north to the south in the in jam-packed schedule for 10 days. Um However, there are so many trips that would mean, make you ineligible for birthright. And they are very strict on that. Like if, if you've gone on another program um, that makes you ineligible, you are not able to have a seat on that birthright bus. And many students look back later and they're like, can I get on this birthright bus? And we're like, no, you can't. So make sure that you do your research before you do any other trip or any other experience to make sure that you wouldn't be ineligible. Um, Onward is another awesome opportunity that a lot of students Students tack on to birthright trips. It's a two month um, immersive internship experience where either you have been set up um, with a business in Israel or onward sets you up with, um, you know, a business within an industry that you're interested in and you get to intern in Israel and live with other um, college students from North America. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful experience. And then a lot of organizations have their own um, Israel trips. Um, Maccabee Task Force has a trip where five Jewish students get to go on a trip to Israel with usually it's about 20 non-Jewish students to, you know, go into areas of Israel and have conversations that maybe you wouldn't have on a traditional birthright bus. Um, Hasbara has another um, immersive Israel trip as well. So a lot of these organizations have um, different trips that have a a different look and a different feel to them. Um, but I, I highly suggest you look into that birthright trip um, and, and then go from there. Awesome. That, that all sounds amazing. Um, Matt, uh, can, can we have you chime in a little bit? Um, any, anything that, that you'd like to add? Sure. I, I think th those are kind of a lot of the big, absolutely the big names in the, in the Israel space. I think um, this is an area where you can think about why and how you want to go to Israel. There are, if you really want to go and be there for six months, do an entire semester abroad, I did that. That is an option too. Again, I would recommend doing birthright first, obviously. Um, but there's those kinds of opportunities. And I think once you've gone through and, and done your first kind of birthright trip, there are so many ways to get there. And you think about like, how do you want to be there, right? Is it live there and doing school there? Is it going in there and doing employment that's based around the texts of our people? Is it going there and having the harder conversations maybe around the conflict in the West Bank, right? There's a lot of those opportunities to get there. And you have to figure out what means, what matters to you. You have only so many breaks, only so many summers, and only so many things. If you try to do it all, you just run out of time. There's so many options now. But you would think about what actually matters the most to you, whether it's arts, cultural, political. There's just such a vast range of what those could look like, both on your campus. And even if it's not on your campus, really, you'll often end there's a national organization that runs these trips and run these programs that you could be connected to, um, even if it's not on your campus specifically. But there's opportunities to be connected on the national level. Excellent. Um, so I, I hope everyone is uh, is hearing the message from from all sides here that uh, not every Israel trip 
is the same as every other Israel trip. So, um, you know, please make sure that, uh, you know, there are wonderful resources out there, both on the Tribe Talk website, um, on, on uh, Federation websites, Hillel websites, community websites. Um, and, I, you know, a lot of the times people will, will say, oh, you know, I like my friend is going on this trip. Uh, or, or I've heard this this trip is really wonderful. Um, again, make make sure that you know it's an opportunity to do some research um, and and find the right fit for you. Um, and I think we we have we have more great questions flowing in here. Um, I th I think we might have answered that, but I just want to make sure we get to it. So if I plan on studying abroad in Israel, uh, can I do birthright before I go? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And as Matt said, like be strategic, like figure out like what trips will play, pay for your plane ride to Israel and then like tack on other experiences and other opportunities from there. Like you have four short years, they go by so quickly. So make sure you're, you're starting to think about what you want to do and in what order. Awesome. And, and that, that's a really important point that we should raise is there, there, are, there are a lot of scholarship opportunities, uh, for, for Israel travel, as well as other Jewish travel experiences um, in college. So, so really where, wherever you want your, your Jewish journey to take you, uh, you know, the Jewish community is excited to help you get there um, and, you know, uh, would, would, would love to help make it happen. Um, so, all right, that's awesome. Uh, thank you both. Uh, great conversation so far. Um, Matt, I'd love to transition over to uh, to another question. So each campus has a different vibe as, as we've started to share a little bit, uh, depending on its location, its makeup, like some, some campuses are in the city versus have more of, of a campus feel. Um, can, can you break down some of the differences and, and, and let us know kind of how to navigate that conversation? Sure. So, you know, many people often start with the, they often start with what is their major? Right. If you know you're going to be interested in doing this major, interested in these pieces, at least for one go, you may always change your major in in school. Very common. You never know. What you, it's hard to decide what you want to do at 18, 19 years old. Um, the the next question I'm like, what are the things that matter to me most outside of the classroom? And I think even if you're a Jewish student and not, you've been involved in Jewish life your entire your entire time going up until college, and you maybe want to take a break, or you're like, I don't really want to do this right now, but I want to do other things. What you start to also realize is that you can be involved in a variety of things that that hit the barometer of what being Jewish is, but it doesn't mean it's only ritual item, ritual activities. So, right, it could be the Jewish a cappella group, and it could be the Hall of for Hunger, which is a social justice group. It might be a climate group that isn't, they have a Jewish climate group, right? So you start thinking about what are those areas that interest most to you? And I think that is part of the conversation to have with whoever you go to on that campus, whether it's a professional or a student, but acknowledging these are the pieces that matter to me most. And if it's not only the ritual holidays and ritual moments, making sure that those other elements meet your needs. And if someone says to you, this campus is mainly based around holidays, that's not a bad thing. It's just good for you to know. Um, and it also means you can figure out what are the other engagement opportunities that I need to be involved with that maybe aren't even Jewish, but are connected to the broader campus as well. And so that's something I would, I would really think about is what are those out pieces, but a variety of the Jewish clubs are not only come celebrate Shabbat, but there are the um, ones that relate to acting and they re relate to acapella um, and social justice. There's a wide range of what actually might matter to you outside of your major and degree. Great. Thank you, Matt. Um, I'm going to add w one thing there that I, I know what something that a lot of families uh, stress out about, you know, once once they've uh, chosen a campus and they're there and they're they're having a great time and then and then a holiday comes and they're like oh do I go home do I stay um, you know uh, for for those of you who are connected to synagogues um, please be in touch with your youth professional or your clergy um, and um, they can help put you in touch with a local synagogue uh, or a community um, by close to your campus um, and and maybe could even set you up with with a local family uh, to be able to celebrate with that that also is an option depending on where you you go to school um, and then many many of the schools actually have relationships with other organizations in the in the local communities as well um, and there, there's just really cool ways to get involved depending on what you're looking for and kind of kind of what the what the flavor is 
Um, so j just wanted to add that there. Um, so uh, I just want to remind everybody we're we're almost at time here. If there are any other questions that you have, please drop them in the chat. Uh, this has been a, a really incredible conversation, and I just I want to I want to thank Eliza and Matt for for bringing all of their their expertise um, uh, to 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 us tonight. Um, and uh, I think uh, we'll we'll start to wrap up a little bit. Um, so if there if there aren't any other questions, I'll um, I'll kind of give a give a bonus uh, uh, bonus round to 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 both Matt and Eliza. Um, if if you had one message uh, that that you could give to uh, teens who are headed to campus next year. Um, what what are what are some pearls of wisdom that they should be thinking about as they embark on that journey um as as far as the abcs of uh of campus go um so we'll uh we'll start with matt if if that's cool and then sure. eliza you'll you'll close us up before we hand it back to robin sure my biggest piece of advice would really be try new things there is no other time in your life where you're going to be surrounded in a university setting where there are so many opportunities at, thrown at you that you can be involved in. And so my advice really is to to think about what are the things that you are that are in your comfort zone that you've been involved with and that you know what you wanted to do um, prior. But what are the things that you learn while you're at university that are new? Right. Is there a trip that you go on? Is there a opportunity to learn with something you've never done? Is there a first time you've done this holiday? Like try those new pieces and you'll and you'll learn about yourself in the process. But always try new things that that are exciting to you and be ready to kind of push that comfort zone in terms of what your Jewish journey looks like. And anything even connect to that Jewish journey as there's such an opportunity to do this during that very fast four years of time. Um, by the time you start, you'll feel like you're out the next day. So keep trying those new things um and never and never feel like you have to do one thing for, one thing one thing do it do something new every time you're ready to try the new thing don't feel like you're stuck because that's the point and the value and importance and why college is so important cool thanks matt uh eliza bring us home Awesome. I would say regardless of your Jew Jewish journey up into this point, whether you are part of a very vibrant Jewish community and you've attended day school and you've gone to summer camp or you haven't had that, um, that same Jewish experience, just don't forget to be proud of who you are and your Jewish roots. Um, I think right now there's a lot of talk about what's what's going on to the Jewish community on college campuses. And yes, reading those headlines can be scary and hearing um, from community members could be scary, but don't forget to be proud of being Jewish and, and know that you'll find your people and you'll find the experience that works for you. Um, so, so be proud, be proud of being Jewish and um, be excited for all the opportunities that are to come. Great. I, uh, I, I, I want to thank both of you uh, for, for joining me in this really incredible conversation tonight. Um, and Jewish Teen Initiative at CJP uh, is, is so, um, so excited to be partnering uh, with, with, with all of you and, and with Tribe Talk to be able to, uh, to, to create opportunities like this. Um, so thanks for having me. Uh, and uh, Robin, back to you. Thank you all. I, first of all, thank you for the great advice at the end. Thank you for this amazing conversation. Brett, Eliza, Matt, you were all incredible. I know that I learned a lot and I appreciate the fact that you've educated us on all of these different organizations and all of the different ways that you can be involved on campus. Um, I would just want to thank you, Brett, and um, Combined Jewish Philanthropies, the Jewish Teen Initiative for, and as well as the Jewish Federation and Endowment Fund of the Bay Area for co-sponsoring this us and joining with us on this important conversation. We really appreciate it. And this is one of three for everybody here. Um, the next, it's one of our signature series called Know Before You Go. The next one will be Sunday night, May 15th, and it'll be about all about anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism on the college campus. And then finally, the last one will be on Sunday night, May 22nd. And that one will be with a college panel and it will uh, just of college students, it will not be recorded. And it's an opportunity 
for all of those of you heading off to college to ask questions. It's just an ask me anything. It's off the record. and You can get anything answered from these college students that you'd like to learn about. We'd love to have you join us. You can find the registration link um, on the landing page on the Tribe Talks website, www.tribetalk.org. We want to thank all of you for joining us today. Um, this webinar will be posted on your, our website. You can go back to it. You can share it with your friends. And good night, everybody. Have a great night.